Alexander Skarsgård's training and diet for Tarzan made him look amazing, but ultimately both were a failure, and here's why you should never do what he did. To understand what I mean, you're going to need some context. So let's start from the beginning. Before landing the leading role in 2016's Tarzan, Alexander Skarsgård was in pretty average shape. Here we can see him in true blood, looking relatively lean, but with very little muscle mass to speak of. So he was really going to have to get in gear if he wanted to be able to play the king of the jungle himself, Tarzan. So Alexander enlisted the help of celebrity trainer Magnus Lujback to be his guide over the next 10 grueling months of training. Their goal was for Alexander to look like a lean, primal athlete, not a bodybuilder. So their training wasn't going to be focused around building as much muscle as possible, and rather they were going to pack on some muscle and then get crazy lean to show it off. So what was their plan? Well, Alexander's Tarzan prep was going to be broken down into three phases, the bulk, the cut, and then maintenance. The goal of the bulk was exactly what it sounds like, to bulk Alexander up and get him to build the pounds of muscle mass that he was going to need to play the king of the jungle. Because Alexander is such a big tall guy, he's got incredibly fast metabolism, meaning he's going to need to be eating a ton of food to start putting on weight, and this means every calorie is precious. When Alexander first started working out with his trainer Magnus, he was running long distances multiple times a week, and this was burning calories that the two could not afford to lose, so Magnus put an end to that right away. Because Alexander was very new to the gym when he started training with Magnus, they couldn't just rush into an insanely high volume bodybuilding program. They needed Alexander to build a good foundation first, so they used a program focused on full body strength, agility, and flexibility. During the first several months of their training, Alexander did at least four and up to six dedicated resistance training workouts per week, with additional ab and core workouts sprinkled in every other day. In terms of weekly volume, they would do 12 to 20 sets per muscle group, less for smaller groups and more for the larger ones to give Alexander that athletic, strong look. But of course, resistance training alone isn't going to build you any muscle. You need fuel. So what was Alexander eating during his bulk? Well, the answer was a lot but of the right stuff. His trainer Magnus wanted him to put on as little fat as possible during the bulk, so he had to eat 7,000 calories a day of clean, high-protein meals. So even during Alexander's bulk, his diet was crazy restrictive. And for those of you who've done a clean bulk before, you know how terrible it can be to try to stuff down thousands of calories of clean food. At that point, chicken breast has never looked less appealing, but things really started to go downhill for Alexander when they got to the cutting phase. This is where things got nasty, because Alexander's body started to revolt. See, during this five-week cutting phase, Alexander's trainer Magnus put him on an even stricter diet plan that cut his meal sizes down significantly, and that was devoid of sugar, gluten, wheat, dairy, and alcohol. So you're probably thinking that for only five weeks, that doesn't sound too bad, right? Well, the diet wasn't the only thing that had changed. During the cutting phase, Magnus had Alexander training 10 to 14 times a week. For a man who's already on a heavily restrictive diet, that is an insane amount of training. But it was worth it because it worked, right? Well, actually, no, it didn't. Here's a quote from Magnus from a Muscle and Fitness article. 10 days before filming, he had to do camera tests. And this was the first time he'd taken his shirt off in front of people. He was on a diet, so he was flat, pale, didn't have volume in his muscles, and he had way too much body fat. He looked great, but not how we wanted him to look. We could tell David Yates wasn't happy. So because of all the intense exercise with very little food to fuel it, Alexander's body was going into survival mode and holding onto as much fat as possible. Not only this, but when you deprive yourself of salts and carbohydrates, your muscles will look flat because salts and carbohydrates are what helps your muscles retain water, and properly hydrated muscles give your physique a nice full look. So not only was Alexander not looking his best because of the depletion of his body's resources, but you can also safely bet that he had lost a good amount of muscle mass in these five short weeks. The body will make budget cuts when its calories are cut so dramatically in an attempt to survive. And muscle is the first thing to go, along with your body slowing down your metabolism. Now, of course, you've seen the photos and clips, so you know they ended up saving Alexander's physique at the last moment by decreasing his workout volume and increasing his fat and carb intake, essentially bringing his body back to life at least temporarily, because after the movie wrap, Alexander, and these are his words, fell off the wagon hard. He burnt out and crashed because the fitness plan he was on was way too intense and restrictive. His plan wasn't one that let him build new sustainable habits around health and fitness that would have let him get into and stay in great shape, but he just wanted to get shredded for the movie, so that's fine. But I'm sure you want to get into shape and stay in amazing shape for the rest of your life. So what should you do differently if you want to get jacked like Alexander did, but actually stay that way? Well, for the most part, I have no problem with what they did for the bulk, but the cut was just way too short. Having such a short amount of time to get lean means you have to be insanely restrictive with your diet and you'll have to do a crazy amount of workout volume. What you should do if you want to get ripped and stay that way 
way is give yourself 3 to 12 months to cut down depending on how much body fat you need to lose. By giving yourself more time, you can follow a plan that's much less restrictive and much more sustainable. I've been cutting since January and I've lost 30 pounds, but because I've given myself time, the process has been easy, I felt amazing, and I've held on to most of my muscle mass. So go watch my video on how to lose fat without losing muscle to learn more and I'll see you there.